All right, welcome back. We'll continue with developing our um, finite element method for linear elliptic uh, PDEs in three dimensions with scalar variables. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just start by recalling the setting that we have. So remember, this is where we are. We have our basis vectors. We have our uh, domain of uh, interest over which we are solving this problem. And if you're th thinking of heat, heat conduction or mass diffusion, um, again, recall that uh, we have two different parts of the boundary. I think maybe I call the maze the Dirichlet boundary. This could be the Neumann boundary. Over the Dirichlet boundary, we're controlling the field itself, uh, either the temperature or the concentration field for the diffusion problem. Over the Neumann boundary, we are con controlling the influx, right? The influx of heat or mass, right? And we have distributed um, sources. Right, for, 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 for either physical interpretation of the problem, okay? So, uh, in the last uh, few segments, we started out by looking at, we started out with the strong form of the problem and then uh, derived the weak form. I, I stated that they're completely equivalent. I showed the equivalence in one direction, from strong form to weak form, okay? And we uh, spent some time understanding all the different uh, terms in there. So this is where we are. Uh, where we were at least, and what we're going to do today is pick up from that um, weak form and uh, take the steps that will eventually get us to our uh, finite element equations for this problem, right? And as you will recall from the 1D problem, what that means is that we need to work out the finite dimensional weak form. Right, and for um, setting the context, let me go to our usual sketch. We have our basis. And that is our domain of interest. Omega, we have some point in there which has um, position vector x. I'm not going to draw the position vector just not to get this uh, diagram too busy. And uh, we have here our uh, boundary conditions, bound, uh, our different boundaries, right? We may have, we have the Dirichlet boundary and the Neumann boundary. Okay, so this is the setting that we have. And uh, the, the infinite dimensional weak form that we have already derived is the following, right? Uh, I'm, I'm going to first write the infinite dimensional weak form and then we get to the finite dimensional weak form, right? So uh, what we've got as far as is the following. We've said, all right, let's, uh, what we need to do here is find u belonging to S, which uh, includes the Dirichlet boundary condition Right, uh, given all the usual data in the problem, given, sorry, I call this u naught, it's u g. Given u g, given our mass influx, given our forcing function, and given our constitutive relation, which is j equals, uh, sorry, I'm going, to, I'm going to stick with writing this in coordinate notation. So I'm going to write this as j i equals minus kappa i j u comma j, right? Given all this, find u such that for all w belonging to v, which consists of w that vanishes on the Dirichlet boundary, okay? For all W belonging to the, to the space V, we have the following weak form, right? We have um, integral over omega. Um, 
W comma I J I D V equals integral over omega W F D V minus integral over the Neumann boundary um, W J N D F. Okay. Um, let me just make sure that this all works out. Yeah, it all works out, right? So, um, so, so this is our uh, weak form that we derived, and of course, you know, at this point, we haven't said anything special about our spaces uh, S and V, except for the fact that S includes the Dirichlet boundary condition, V includes the homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition. So, at this point, when posed as such, we are really talking of an infinite dimensional uh, weak form. And uh, as we made the observation in the case of the 1D problem, that does not make it any easier to solve than the strong form. It bears complete equivalence to the strong form, and so we really haven't made any steps towards making it uh, easier for us to solve or to de towards developing approximations, right? And just as before, we develop approximations by going to a finite dimensional uh, form, right? So the finite dimensional form is the following, right? Just uh, the statement of it is going to look very much the same as before for the 1D problem, right? So what we want to do now is find UH belonging to SH, right? Uh, which is a subset of S, okay? And as before, um, SH is a finite dimensional function space. All right. Okay. Um, let's say a little more about SH, all right? The way we construct SH is again going to look like we did, uh, like like everything we did in the 1D problem. SH uh, now consists of uh, functions uh, like UH, right? And now we specify, as we did in the 1D problem, that we are interested in functions that live in H1, right? Over the domain of interest over omega. All right? And because uh, SH is a subset of S, it must inherit the Dirichlet boundary condition as well. All right? So UH um, equals uh, UG on the Dirichlet boundary. Okay? All right? Um, and then the rest of it just follows, right? Given everything else that we have, of course, we're given UG. We are given the influx condition. We're given the forcing function. And we know that uh, the same constitutive relation applies, right? Okay? Um, I guess properly when we are stating the constitutive relation in the context of the finite dimensional weak form, we are no longer speaking of uh, U being drawn from the full space S. So we can already put an H there and there. Okay? And you recall that just as uh, we did in the 1D problem, the H is the soup. H is just to remind us that these are finite dimensional functions and um, the way we construct them, of course, critically uses the, the notion of an element size. Okay? So that's what the H uh, indicates. All right. Um, so we're going to find UH um, in this sort of space uh, such that for all WH in VH 
subset of V and where VH consists of uh, functions WH also in H1 on uh, over omega but satisfying the homogeneous uh, Dirichlet boundary condition. Okay. So, for all such WH, uh, again the finite dimensional version of our weak form is satisfied, right? And that takes on the form integral over omega WH comma X, sorry, I'm lapsing into my uh, notation for uh, for the 1D problem, sorry, WH comma I, J, H, I, DV equals integral over omega WH F DV minus integral over the flux boundary W H J N D S. Okay, and once again we observe that the data are not um, finite dimensional functions, right? We have exact representation of that data, right? Okay, and and you note that really in writing out this weak form, the only thing we did was replace all our uh, any function that is. Uh, drawn or, or obtained from u or w with the corresponding finite dimensional version. And of course, we define what the finite dimensional spaces are going to be, right? As for the 1D problem, we are drawing them from H1. Okay, so this is our finite dimensional weak form for the problem, okay? Um, and, and you recall now that uh, as in the 1D problem, what we need to do in order to proceed with the with the formulation is to define what we mean by these finite dimensional spaces, okay?